So they are still in the mindset of, man, can we just get one in? Right, no question about it. And you could kind of sense the frustration from head coach Tina Thompson as well as Nell Fortner that we're kind of going through this again. But nonetheless, we have a basketball game to play here at Georgia Tech. Underway, Brooke Weisbrook, Sam Ravitch. Here's the first shot. Morella Kubai knocks it down, and she is the leading rebounder in the entire country and also getting in on the action there offensively. Anybody that plays against Georgia Tech has got to deal with Lorella Kubai. She's so adept at, at passing, at rebounding. She's so strong inside that she's almost a guaranteed bucket. Not to mention extremely versatile on the footwork. So Virginia's going to have their hands full today, Sam. No question about it. And a takeaway there. Virginia has had some trouble turning the ball over. They average 18 and a half a game. Got to take care of the ball against this Georgia Tech team that is one of the best defenses in the country. Nara Hermosa puts one up and in and an early four-point lead for the Yellow Jackets. And your top two scores for the Yellow Jackets getting in the offense right away. And of course, the Georgia Tech defense is their strong suit. So we talked about a couple of the starters, Taylor Valade, Cameron Taylor, and Alea Parker all out today. So. Mandy Toa has to deal with a lot of the offense, which she already does, but that's an incredible load to carry. Good thing she's coming off a 20-piece against NC State. Right, she's had a couple of those over the last five games, three 20-plus point games. There's Amandine Toa, leading scorer on this team, averaging over 13 a game. And that one just a bit short. And who else but Lorella Kubai to bring it down. Georgia Tech quickly up ahead to Hermosa. She's got four already. Here's a look at the starting five for Georgia Tech. A lot of senior-led players. Digna Stroutman, one of the many transfers from Syracuse last year. And Aaliyah Love has also taken that next step in her game. So, again, just seven players available today for Georgia Tech. But Nell Fortner likes to stick with the starting five and give them a lot of minutes. Yeah, you get your experience back. They return 85% of their points as Virginia is still trying to get on the board. And it's tough that Georgia Tech defense, this is what they're looking for. Coach Fortner was talking to us about this the other day. Hey, we got to get up and down the floor. We'd love to run and create some easy offense off of our turnovers, off of our defense, because it's not like they have the one or two guards that can give you 15 to 20 a game, right? So those, those points have to come from somewhere else. Caden Lawson with the ball, hands it off to London Clarkson. Nice move. And a nice move for the 6'2 junior out of Texas. Great move by London Clarkson. You know, sometimes all it takes is just a quick head fake, quick ball fake jab step, and you can get by the defense. And Virginia's going to have to keep things as simple as they can to try and score against a very tough tech defense. Offensive rebound put back for Hermosa. She's got six of Georgia Tech's eight points here in the first quarter. Nice drive and a tough finish at the net there. Katie Lawson. Lawson. Yeah, she's been playing well her last three games, hitting 11 of 17 field goals. So you want to go with who's hot, but today, listen, that's got to be anybody for Virginia. They'll take any points anywhere they can get them, being so shorthanded. Amandine Twa just a little bit short. Offensive rebound and put back for Meg Jefferson. I think promising start, really, offensively for both teams. It took a minute for Virginia to get on the board, but now that they have, you get into that flow, and it always feels good. You get a couple of baskets under your belt, especially against a, a defense like Georgia Tech, just knowing you're going to run into that buzzsaw. It'll give you some early confidence. Stroutman is three, is off the mark, follows it up, and an offensive foul. Good defense here. The offensive rebound is going to be an issue as well, but great job to get in position. That's Caden Lawson taking the charge, giving her body up. One of my favorite plays in the game is taking a charge. I love it. Well, Brooke, if you're a fan of fast-paced offense, you're not really going to find it in this game, but you are <laughs> going to see quite a bit of good defense. Both these teams average well, just about 60 points a game. Georgia Tech averaging 61 and a half, and Virginia under 60 at 58. But there, there are some good defensive players in this game. That, that'll be something to keep an eye on. Yeah, if you put up 50 against Tech, you're doing all right. 
right. it says something. We've already seen this season a UConn struggle and lose to this yep. Georgia Tech team, a Louisville team that was trailing for 33 minutes in the game a week ago and ended up getting an Emily Anks the last second layup to win the game. But Georgia Tech kind of had them on the ropes and then a win over Georgia. So this is a, a very good defensive team that really is suffocating for some of the best teams in college basketball that we've seen this year. You know what surprised me the most was Louisville won the game. One player reached double figures in that game, and yet the Cards were still able to eke out a win. Watching that one, it was like, man, first team to 35 might win this game. Eight to six here to get us going at Georgia Tech. Here's Kubai on the baseline. Gets it back. Go to my lots in it. Into Hermosa, nice move, and ran into a couple of orange jerseys. The save, and a double save at that. Here's Lodemai Lawton in with seven on the shot clock. Leaves the floater a bit short, and Carol Miller, the junior, brings down the rebound. What you're seeing is a lot of hustle points for Georgia Tech, and that's something that you can count on if you're playing for Nell Fortner. That's what she said, you know, we're not short on energy. We're not short on hustle. This is where a lot of our points and a lot of our defense, our, our identity comes from that. We play with hustle and energy. Lawton in transition three, follows up her shot. And another fresh shot clock at 20 for Georgia Tech. That's gonna be the third off, fourth offensive rebound for the Yellow Jackets already in this first quarter. Nice pass. But what do you expect? That's one of the best passing, if not the best passing big in the country, Lorella Kubai. Leading her team in assists. That's her 64th on the season. 65th, excuse me. Last eight points for Georgia Tech have come from Nera Hermosa, but Lorella Kubai already a couple assists in the game, as you mentioned, Brooke. Baseline jumper knocks it down. Caden Lawson. Can you imagine being Virginia having not played a game since the 19th of December? You, know, you can practice all you want, Sam. You can recreate drills. You can come in and get up extra shots. But the adrenaline and the pressure of the game as Kubai steps outside to hit the three, the, the adrenaline of a game, it takes so much out of you. That's just the third. Sorry, bro. Go ahead. Or just how short-handed Virginia is, you know? Right. You're dealing with that, you're trying to get your legs back, and you don't have a lot of subs. That's just the third three of the year for Kubai. Well, she looked comfortable shooting it, I can tell you that. <laughs> she <laughs> Maybe. certainly did. She should be taking some more after this, but Tech getting into the passing game quite early. That is their fifth assist on six main field goals. It's a good sign. All right, welcome back, Georgia Tech. Number 16 in all the land taking on Virginia. They lead 13 to eight. A couple of the most illustrious coaches with illustrious careers are in this game. Tina Thompson in her fourth season at the helm at UVA, four-time WNBA champion, nine-time All-Star. Really impressive career, and it was a joy, I think, for talking to her and just kind of getting her idea of the philosophy of the game. I thought you asked a great question about kind of the way that the bigs in the front court have shifted and going up against a Lorella Kubai. We'll get more into that as our game progresses. And then, of course, Nell Fortner took the team to the Sweet 16 last year, reigning ACC Coach of the Year, has now been a Coach of the Year in the ACC, SEC, and the Big Ten. And, uh, man, I mean, what she's done to this program has been nothing short of incredibly impressive. Yeah, and I think these are two women who have teams that have bought into their philosophy. They they enjoy playing for them, and there's a spirit about the way that they play that you can tell that there's so much respect there. And I mean, how, how could you not, you know, when you look at the uh, career that Tina Thompson brings to the table, and Nell Fortner, you know, her coaching career definitely speaks for herself. And it, it was a joy to talk to both of them and, and get some insight, you know, on many things about the history of the bigs and, and the development and the new wrinkles that we've seen, especially with some players over the last 10, 15 years. You know, and then with Coach Fortner just talking about, you know, offense and getting in the gym and just how players have got to get better. 
Lee Love gets fouled as she was going to the rim. Kubai has to wipe off an elbow, maybe. Another thing just to keep an eye on too, Brooke, is, is simply foul trouble, right? With both of these benches a little bit short, albeit Virginia with 10, but Georgia Tech just with seven players in the game. You want to keep an eye on that. Yeah, and you wouldn't be surprised, you know, kind of see a, a zone when players get into foul trouble because you're right, the benches are, are pretty short for both teams. And not to mention you're trying to save your legs, right? So when you're playing man-to-man, -man, that expends a lot of energy as well. Move to the open court. Wow. Caden Lawson just couldn't finish at the net, but an offensive rebound was brought in by Pitts and then turned over and a foul in the back. To Leah Pitts, the six foot sophomore out of Maryland. Down low to Kubai. Kicks it out. Lottinen, a long three, bit strong. Love brings in the rebound, puts it back, but it's blocked from behind from Clarkson. Big time board, but bigger block from London Clarkson. Great heads up on the ball, and just the timing of that block, really key there. I mean, we've seen how aggressive Georgia Tech is on the offensive glass. They've really hit the boards hard. They've got five offensive rebounds, but Virginia, I think, is matching that intensity, and that's what's important. You know, although they haven't played for a while, they are not short on intensity, and that's a sign of how Coach Thompson's gotten her team ready. Amandine Trois knocks down the three. Shoots over 30% from long range, and we are tied with a minute 22 left to go in the first quarter. We know Trois is not about to come out of this game. She leads the ACC playing about 36 minutes a game. Fadeaway jumper from Kubai. I'm not sure if that's the shot that Coach Fortner wants. Georgia Tech with a lot of size and a size advantage, certainly in this game. Top of the key three. No good in the offensive rebound to Pitts. Fighting with the baseline there, just has to throw it back. Dubai trying to get a shot off from the leak whistle there. Take another look. Clarkson. Yeah, let's take another look at this one. Clarkson just trying to body up, and you see that left arm come down. And she wanted the foul on the floor, not going to happen. But one thing I really enjoy about the changes inside, if you go inside that charge circle and you go straight up, you can jump. As long as you're straight up, it's called the principle of verticality. She didn't do it, but it's possible. Goodbye, misses the first. Here's Thursday night's ACC Network Women's College Basketball Doubleheader, 6 Eastern, Carol Lawson, number 17, Duke, hosting Virginia Tech. Led by, of course, Elizabeth Kitley, who's averaging almost 20 points a game. Then Florida State squaring off against this Georgia Tech team. You can always watch both games live on the ESPN app. One app, one tap. What a season Virginia Tech and Kenny Brooks has had so far. Their first 3-0 start in program history in the ACC. Looking to make it 4-0 coming up. Yeah, look at that. Looking forward to that one. Duke just getting their first ACC win over Notre Dame. A good matchup. Here's McKenna Dale for three. No good. The offensive rebound for Jefferson. And the follow is off the mark as well. Shot clock is off. Georgia Tech with a one-point lead. That high double screen opens up a lot, especially those threes from the top of the key, but Digna can't hit it. Shot clock winding down. Last second heave for Carter is no good. So Georgia Tech started out really hot, finished 0 for the last four, but it's a tight one here so far, Brooke. Yep, and Twa is going to be the key. She's got five points already, has hit her first three of the game. They want to find her early and often if you're Virginia.
right, welcome back. Head coach Nell Fortner trying to fire up her squad. 16th ranked Georgia Tech taking on Virginia as we get set to start this second quarter. All 14 points Brooke Weisbrod have come from Hermosa and Dubai. Six for nine from the floor. The rest of the team, 0 for 10. And that's where you, you want to see the growth in offense come for Georgia Tech because just having two players scoring is great, but it's not going to get it done, right? So that's where you have to have a uh, load of my, my lot in to come in, hit you hit with some with some threes, dribble. But she's been put in a difficult position because her natural position is the two. So ideally, you know, they want to get her in the corner. They want to utilize her in, in getting some spacing. Um, but having to handle the ball quite a bit has been tough for her this season because no Kiara Fletcher means you've got to put her at the one. Nice backdoor cut, but a couple of shots that have been missed. That one from Bristol. Been kind of point blank. And the Texas team, no Fortner talked to us about this. She said, we would love to run a lot more. It's just our numbers right now aren't getting us there and the type of offense they need to run. So they really, you know, again, counted on their defense to power them through the game. Their strength and offensive rebound and Kubai is leading that charge once again. She is so hard to box out. You can have the mentality and the technique, but she's just got the grit and will to go get the ball. Yeah, no question. I think I think it's fair to say she's a pro. Uh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And will certainly be talked about her leading the entire country in rebounding. It was a nice fadeaway shot for Meg Jefferson. But, you know, Kubai, of course, named on the John Wooden midseason watch list, one of four yep. ACC players. Um, it, it, how do you go about game planning if you're a coach to, to guard a player like that that is just so versatile in the post? Well, normally you'd say, okay, we're going to throw a double team at her, right? But because she's such a good passer, she's going to look for the open player. Then you say, all right, we're going to challenge her to shoot outside. But you see what she can do there. She can put the ball on the floor. She's just got so many tools and skills that it makes her one of the more difficult players to guard. And not only that, Sam, she just plays with passion. And, and yeah. I don't know how you scout for a player who plays the way that she does and how unselfish that she is, you know? And, and I love talking to Nell Fortner and her telling us about how the emphasis for her this year was really to create more assists and less turnovers. And I think you can really see that in her game. Hermosa, a lot of juries around her, able to get a shot off, no good. The rebound brought in by McKenna Dale and Virginia. Virginia hanging in there, though. They've been doing a great job of playing patient basketball and finding their spots to score, not rushing shots. And that'll help hitting the three ball. And that'll certainly help the first lead of the game for Virginia. Knocked down by Dale, her first points of the game as well. And Dale coming in, the Connecticut Gatorade Player of the Year, scored almost 1,800 points in high school. So she know, you know she can put it, put it up, and so Definitely Tina Thompson looking for her points anywhere she can get them today. Great job by Dale to pull the trigger. I was looking at that too. McKenna Dale grew up in Storrs, Connecticut. That is right in the backyard of UConn. <laughs> no love it's for like, Gino there. but right? uh, like, Can I get a letter? Can I get right. something? A t-shirt, a camp shirt, something? Now, I grew up in Connecticut as well. She's the all-time leader in scoring at E.O. Smith High School, which is, I don't know, maybe a couple miles from Gamble Pavilion. Wow. Well, you know, perhaps she wanted to explore her options, get out of state a little bit. You never know. And she's also got a great background in, in swimming. She's a state champ swimmer in the 50 right. and the 100 free. Dual athlete. Hey, you know something about that. <laughs> Not swimming, though, boy. <laughs> Not my sport. <laughs> Sarah Bates three is off the mark. It's been a bit of a struggle ever since the start of the first quarter to find the bottom of the basket for Georgia Tech. But Virginia now squarely right in this game, trailing by one. It's been a couple of threes. Kenneth Dale knocking one down. Twaz had one as well. It was a wild shot there from Kid Lawson. But an open shot though, right? I mean, it felt rushed to me, but it was a good decision off the double screen. She was open, but I felt like her balance was off, almost like she was leaning to the left and going toward the rim instead of just getting her feet under her. 
Kubai thought about it. Go to my lots in it. Tracks a defender, kicks to Stroutman. No, no good. There are Hermosa there for the rebound. She gets fouled. Look at what you got to deal with. Georgia Tech, 6'4", 6'5", 6'1", 6'2". Those are, it's, it's not a 6'8 out there. I'll give you that, but it sure feels like it with how strong these ladies are. I mean, they are relentless. So Love heads to the bench, gets a rest. Again, just seven players available today for Georgia Tech as Hermosa knocks down the first free throw. All right, keep in mind, here's our Wednesday night ACC doubleheader, Paulo Boncaro and number two Duke. They're gonna be in Winston-Salem squaring off against Alondis Williams in Wake Forest at 7 Eastern, followed by Malik Williams and Louisville hosting Darion Sebron, who is averaging a double-double in the Wolfpack, both games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Boy, how about the Hurricanes coming into Cameron yeah. Indoor last night, beating the Dukies. That was a wild game. I'm I'll tell you what, yeah. we have really seen just like upset after upset. It's almost <laughs> like the weekly <laughs> rankings coming out are, are just, uh, you know, a suggestion more so than any, <laughs> any sort of fact that we've seen this year. That's great. That'll play right into March Madness. Take that exactly. all day. It feels like March and January. Is It's kind of mm -hmm. what it feels like. Stroutman up, transition three, in and out. And a rebound to Aaliyah Pitts. Well, Tech really struggling from behind the three-point line yeah. right now, just two of 11. Offensive foul, Lottman was there. Yeah, Georgia Tech started this game four for six from the floor since they are four for 22. Let's watch Lottman set up for the charge here. Reading the defense, that's just brilliant. I mean, that's a simple play and something that you can do if you're just a heads-up player on defense, you learn those type of tendencies. That's from watching film, right? Okay, I know she might give me a little hezzy, but she's gonna go right. So I'm gonna beat her there, take the contact, and get the charge. Second foul on Caden Lawson. Stroutman are really struggling to find that outside shot. 0 for 5 now from long range. Long two for Hermosa, no good. Stroutman are fighting for the offensive rebound. Kicks it out. Lawton in for three now. No good. Nothing is falling for the Yellow Jackets. And that's a, a big use of energy right there, especially grabbing your 11th offensive rebound. They've got eight second chance points. So you're, you know, you're leaving quite a few on the board there, not to mention taking a lot of threes in this game. Almost half of your shots. Two for 13 from beyond the arc for Georgia Tech. Twa almost turned it over. Dale and the baseline jumper no good. And Sarah Bates, the three-point sharpshooter, brings in the rebound. Are you okay with Georgia Tech settling for threes, or would you like to see him get it into Kubai and Hermosa more? I'd like to see the ball go inside more, you know, just knowing that you've got, you got a limited roster, you're putting a lot of minutes up. You don't want to fall in love with the three. If you can go one, two, or three sides, work the ball around, like that's a good three-point shot. I'm okay with that. It wasn't rushed, it wasn't one pass and shoot, right? You can move it around a bit, and Sarah Bates knocking that shot down. And meanwhile, Virginia's just on a drought. They have not been able to find defense or offense anywhere. No points in the last 20 plus now. Twa picks up the dribble. Shot clock winding down, five to shoot now for Lawson. Tries to split a couple of defenders and it's turned over. And heads up play quickly up the floor. Nara Hermosa, too many steps. I mean, Dale got a piece of that to bother Hermosa to make her travel, but that's what Nell Fortner wants to see. She wants to see her ladies get out and run a little bit. Great a turnover off your defense, that helps. You know what else helps? Nice three ball. Tech finally hitting one. They are three of 14 from downtown. Welcome back, 24-18. Georgia Tech on top here, just under three left to go in the second quarter, and it has been the Lorella Kubai and Nera Hermosa show so far. They are seven for 13 from the floor, Brooke, and the rest of the team two for 19. Yeah, Her Hermosa and Kubai are definitely the heartbeat of this team, and certainly you want to see some offense from Mylotnin and 
you know, Stroutman can get involved as well. That would certainly help. But you know, the, the big ticket for Lorella Kubai to come back this year was the incentive that she could play with Kiara Fletcher. So when she got hurt, that was a big loss to this team, as you see Kiara on the bench right there. And for all signs that we hear is that she's coming back next season. So certainly hope that that's the case. You know, but with those big three, you can only imagine how much more dangerous this top 20 Georgia Tech team would be. Right, and then you also lose three games into the season to the transfer porter, Loyal McQueen. Yeah. Uh, that was, you know, that was unexpected. So, you know, of course, every team has to deal with adversity, but it, it, it's not as if this Georgia Tech team doesn't have offense. It's just that it, it, it might not be available right now. Exactly. And it's it's working. I think Nell Fortner felt very confident that they are about to turn a corner. And any team that plays with this type of passion and energy, yes, it's going to turn a corner. At some point in time, it certainly will. But for now, you got the dynamic duo leading the day, leading the way. And it's going all good for the Georgia Tech. A 10 0 run, and Hermosa's got 12 points, 12 of the 26. having to try to create you know on her own there you got to get some ball screens involved and what you don't want is for everybody in a Virginia uniform except for number 23 Twa to stand around and say okay you know you're our leading scorer make something happen right and that's the pressure that comes with not having your regular starters in the game everybody else is kind of used to watching those starters go at it now you got to get involved great ball fake and yes. take I was just gonna say everybody touched the ball in that possession it was good ball movement and a good take for Kubai, just couldn't finish. Yeah. Minute 22 left to go here in the first half. Number 16 in the nation, Georgia Tech leading Virginia. Both these teams have dealt with COVID protocol, health and safety issues. It has been a week since Georgia Tech has played. It's been three weeks since Virginia has played. And you know, in, in many respects, you're also seeing some tired legs out there. It's, it's one thing to practice. It's another thing to play live game action. And it's going to take a little while for Tina Thompson and her crew to get back to kind of that full team and, and just kind of exercise everything it takes to, to play in a game. It, it takes a while. Oh, it's, it's a lot. I mean, and it's a lot more than physical, right? You're traveling, you're getting away. You got to make sure that you're staying safe while you're traveling. So there's just a lot of emotional toll that goes into getting these teams ready to play. Stroutman a kicks. More good ball movement. Love to Hermosa on the elbow. Go to my lot in it. Seven to shoot. Puts it on the floor. Kicks to Stroutman. Stroutman has the three blocked by Twa. And Twa on the open floor has numbers. Nice pass to Miller, and she gets fouled. Great defensive series for Virginia. Really like the energy at which they played with on the other end. That's going to lead to, you can, and you can tell, right? Twa, you can kind of grab it on her hips after expending a lot of energy to block the run out in the fast break. And unfortunately for Virginia, they don't finish there, but hopefully they can get to the line. They are uh, now over seven minutes without a score. First foul on there, Hermosa, and Carol Miller knocks down the free throw. Best free throw shooter on this team, shooting 78%. All right, nothing but net every Thursday, 10 Eastern, right after our women's basketball doubleheader. Who will break down everything in the ACC, highlights, analysis of every women's game, take a look ahead of the best week's games on the schedule in the coming week. It's insight you can't get anywhere else right here on the ACC Network and ESPN app. You can watch anywhere, anytime. Five to shoot, Carol Miller rattles one off the rim, and the rebound there to Georgia Tech and Love. Three to shoot, Lockton and puts it behind the back. Nero Hermosa, long two. At the buzzer does not fall, and Georgia Tech will take the 26-19 lead into the half year at home. Hasn't exactly been the prettiest of halves. 27% from the floor for Georgia Tech and just 25% from the floor for Virginia. Georgia Tech finishes two of their last 13, and Virginia over their last seven from the floor. 
Virginia held in in the first half. Couple of scores there, 12 force. In the meantime, we'll send it back to the studio and Drew Carter and Kelly Gramlich. Again, 26-19 at the half. A lot of those made field goals and Hermosa, 12 points, four rebounds and just moved really well, I thought, in the paint. And for as much as Georgia Tech actually struggled on offense, they were able to make up for it by keeping Virginia off the boards and without a field goal for almost eight minutes in the second quarter. This is what the Kabai does so well. Draws attention, the double team, so that she can dish off to her postmate in the interior. And that's just so much talent from a big. And to be able to pass like that for a guard, I can't wait to see what the numbers say toward the end of the season of where she's likely to be drafted in the WNBA. Good start for Georgia Tech and Digna Stratmana, who really struggled to find her shot, made one three in the first half, already the first shot of the second half, knocks down her second three of the game. It's one for seven from the floor for the first two quarters. Just 25% from the field for the Cavaliers in the first half, and they start with a turnover. Again, that suffocating defense for Georgia Tech. Back here for the third quarter. UVA going into a 2-3 zone. Trying to keep Tech out of the paint, that's going to be a tough go. Kubai still with the catch, but you want to see her maybe not fade away, but take another step if she could, get to that right side of the rim and go up strong. Kubai averages 8.7 points a game. She's at eight already. Nice drive from Miller, puts the floater up, in and out, knocked out of bounds, and it's going Yellow Jackets way. and still to get on the board yet in this game. Good look down low to Kubai, puts it up and in for 10 points now. Second in double figures next to Maria Hermosa. Well, the assists keep racking up for Georgia Tech. That's a great sign if you're Nell Fortner looking at the stats. 10 of 12 field goals are assisted on. And it tells me it's good teamwork. You're looking for the best shot, not the first shot. London Clarkson underneath. Rattles it home, does Meg Jefferson. A junior out of Sydney, Australia. Has played in all but one game this season for the Hoos. Talked to Coach Tina Thompson about Jefferson. She was off to such a hot start last season. She was 17 of 22 from the floor in the first three games. Ended up injured after the third game, so didn't play the full five. She's trying to get her rhythm here as Kubai misses the bank shot. Yeah, with Jefferson, you know, Coach Thompson told us that she's still trying to find herself. She's that versatile forward who can shoot it or play back to the basket, but you, know, you got to get those reps in, and that's a nice shot outside by Carol Miller. Carol Miller brings Virginia back within single digits. Miller had just three points in that loss to NC State on the 19th. Has been dealing with a bit of injuries to take care of in the summer. So she's also another player that's trying to get her feet under herself as Hermosa banks one off the backboard. She's now got 14 points in the game. See how strong she is just back of the defense down, using that left shoulder, creating some space. London Clarkson playing that well going straight up, but that's just too good for Nerea Hermosa. For those last two baskets for Virginia, they had gone almost 10 minutes without a field goal. Leah 
Pitts puts it on the floor, spins back out. Here's Miller. Poked away by Kubai. Miller still with possession, finally gets it in. Down low to Clarkson, who has it taken away. Lightning in the open floor, opts to slow it up. Lottenen with the ball, really struggled against Louisville, had eight turnovers, which is uncharacteristic for her. And now lays one up and in with the left hand, and now her first points of the game after starting 0 for 5. I'd like to see her get on the board, and that's a great decision. You know, Georgia Tech took it to the right side, they went back, they came over to the left side, utilized the screen, and then Lottenen saw an opening on the left side, so she just took the drive. I like it. She's got to get involved in the offense, Sam. I would agree there. The ACC's most improved player from last year. Gets fouled on the floor there, going for the rebound. Coming off that screen, you know, just a little hesitation, too, to sell Carol Miller on, hey, maybe I'll kick it out to the corner. But instead, takes it up strong on that left-hand side. Lawtonen led this team last year. She averaged 15 points a game, as well as leading the team in assists and steals. She obviously still facilitates, and she's great on defense. We know that. But how do you get a player like her more involved in the offense? Well, I will tell you from personal experience, having to play the one when you're naturally a two, yeah. and she picks up the block, having to play the one when you're naturally a two is so hard. I mean, you're literally going from the mindset of, I'm a scorer, I can create off the dribble, or just give me the ball, I'm going to figure out how to score. To, I have to run the plays, facilitate for everybody else, become a totally different player. So I can understand how somebody can go from leading the team in points, assists, and steals to you know, maybe having a different set of stats and numbers this year. So that, that is going to take a long time to have that adjustment. You know, it kind of reminds me of Brooke, albeit not the exact same situation, was Notre Dame last year with Dara Mabry having to run the point. And now you're bringing in Olivia Miles and Sony Citron with them. She kind of moves back over to the two in her natural spot. Yeah. Just kind of feels a little bit similar in that respect. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it is night and day. From the one spot to the two spot, they are, you have to think so differently. So when you can find a player who's that combo, who can play both, like that's, that's like finding gold. Great hustle by Kubai. Really good hustle. Troutman up the trailer. Kubai. Foul on. on the drive. Count it. And she'll go to the line to finish a three-point play. Give me all American buys. Lorella Kubai. You go up, you hustle for the board, and you take it up strong from literally one end of the court to the other. Get you an and one. legend Tina Thompson in her fourth season at UVA and Brooke you guys had a great conversation that I really enjoyed it, you know in many respects Tina Thompson I think changed the way that we thought about how a front court player was supposed to play and she went against her coaches and said look this is the player that I am <laughs> and proved them wrong time and time again but here's a couple of the big game changers if you will talk a little bit about the players on this list and what they did to change the way that we thought about bigs in the game of basketball. Yeah, I love that conversation too, because really this list was inspired by Coach Thompson and, and the players that she played with and, and had an opportunity to, to mentor. Candace Parker, she said, that was my mentee. And you know, for, for Tina Thompson, she was coached by Cheryl Miller, who allowed her to be herself. And she said it wasn't the norm to be able to face up and, and shoot threes, but Cheryl Miller was the GOAT. She said, no argument. She's, in fact, taller than I am. She could do it all. Lauren Jackson at 6'5", could play like her and hit the three face up. So versatile. And Tamika Catchings and Shamika holds called the Meeks. Played that 3-4 spot. Both tough guards. She said, I would guard them. And that versatility is one of, if not the best weapon that you can have in basketball. And certainly, we're seeing the, the position continue to elevate, not only with Tina Thompson and what she did for the game, which was like, hey, I don't have to play with my back to the basket. I'm going to do my thing. But Lorella Kubai being a terrific passer. Aliyah Boston with her footwork, her timing. Uh, Asia Wilson and what she's been able to do. So even the, you know, the new class of bigs, it is outstanding to watch the skill level of 6'4 to 6'8 women do what they do 
you know, me at 5'7", it was like, wow, like, I'm not going to go in there and get embarrassed. <laughs> Let me just stay out and, and, and be out this way. But it is so much fun to watch the evolution of the game and really look back at the players like Tina Thompson, Cheryl Miller, and Warren Jackson, the Meeks, Candace Parker, and thank them for changing the way that the game is played. Yeah, and I, you know what, Brooke? I think in many respects, the women's game, and that they were kind of ahead of the men's game in that aspect where you had those versatile post players. That wasn't, that didn't even come along, I think, the men's game until later on. I would agree with you. I mean, I think Kentucky was one of the first teams I heard to be talking about positionless basketball, and that was when, you know, Anthony, Anthony Davis and those yep. guys were around. So I would agree with you, in it, and I think that a lot of times, you know, you look at the WNBA and you also look in the college game that has now gone back to quarters. Women have set the precedence, and it, it would be great. I talk about this every year because I can't wait until the men's college game goes to quarters because I don't know what they're doing. Like, they're the last and only type of basketball to be played in the world that relies on halves, and it makes no sense to me. <laughs> I like it. So Time I out you, Sam. for I head coach you. Tina Thompson. <laughs> As a 11-0 run has transpired for Georgia Tech, they lead 42-24 over the Cavaliers. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Number 16, Georgia Tech with a 42-24 lead over Virginia. Talked about you know, how the bigs have kind of changed and evolved over the course of the last decade plus. Morella Kubai has shown us over the past minute or so has just kind of put on display of, uh, of what that means to be a big now a days and the all-around post player averaging over 12 points a game the assists almost five a game she's got a double double today a pro's pro yeah i think she's a first rounder no doubt be a lot of teams that will benefit from her versatility she i mean she's only got four assists I, I, I don't think a triple double is out of the question. <laughs> you know, yeah. her teammates going to have to hook her up now, but she's definitely got that capability. If, if Coach Warner wants to keep her in, she can do it. Offensive foul against Ali Love. That's her first personal. A total of five fouls for Georgia Tech in this game. Yeah, that just gives you a sense of how efficient their defense is. They are holding teams to 45 points, the number one scoring defense in the NCAA, the ACC. Also one of the top five rebounding teams, field goal percentage, three-point percentage. And defensively, they really have it locked down. When you have a team that knows how to play defense, they typically don't foul. Those two things usually go hand in hand. On the other side for Virginia, the struggles have continued. Nine possessions, 0 for 5 from the field, four turnovers. But yeah, you take a look at the defense for Georgia Tech in the ranks, holding opponents to 31.6 from the field. That's second in all of D1 basketball, and you mentioned it. 45.7 points a game. It's Carter putting up the two there, and the lead jumping the point. And I like that possession from Georgia Tech. You see how much the ball moved around one side to the other. I, I'm taking this press now, okay? We're deep into the third quarter, 20-point lead. You got a short bench, but Nell Fortner says, no, we're going to turn on the gas, and I'm not mad. I like it. Firing she up her squad. Yeah, yes. she told us, too, just because we don't have the depth necessarily right now doesn't mean we're not going to push. But it's just a matter of picking those spots when to do it, and they forced a Virginia turnover there. Here's Kubai yep. underneath, fading away, leaves it short. The rebound to Clarkson. UVA looking to push. Twab one on two, and once again, another turnover. Back to back turnovers. Say Kubai. We can get you another camera, but we cannot get another Kubai. <laughs> Take a much needed rest. I'm sure we'll see her appear in the fourth quarter as well. 15 turnovers now for Virginia. Yeah. 
Sarah Bates. Love gets fouled in the shot. And she'll go to shoot two. Goes against Amadine Twal. Love's another player who we really haven't spent a whole lot of time talking about, but yeah. certainly put up some points. I mean, she topped a career high uh, from a previous game that she had with 16 against Wake and had just scored some on, uh, against Boston as well. She was 7 to 10, so she can give you some efficient uh, offense for sure. No question about it. Here's Thursday night's ACC Network women's college basketball doubleheader. Six Eastern, Kara Lawson, number 17, Duke, hosting Virginia Tech, led by Elizabeth Kitley, who's averaging almost 20 a game. Then Florida State squaring off against this Nell Fortner squad, number 16, Georgia Tech. You can always watch both games live on the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Fifteen oh run for the Yellow Jackets. Amadine Twa looking to end it with a three. That doesn't fall. The rebound falls in the hands of McKenna Dale. Dale puts up a quick shot. Shot clock off for Georgia Tech and Sarah Bates now. As they lead 46-24. Third quarter winds down. Here's Love, top of the key. Love bobbles it a bit, finds the bottom of the bucket for three. And Love's got eight in the game. That high ball screen's worked very well for Georgia Tech. Stroutmana steps up to do it and gives Love that open three. Somehow she found the handle on the ball before she released it. So 49-24 to wrap up the third quarter. It was Aaliyah Love, but we were talking about want to see a little bit more love, showing some love on the floor. All right, welcome back. Fourth quarter about to get underway here in Atlanta, Georgia. Number 16, Georgia Tech, 49, Virginia 24. Here's a look at the updated ACC standings from today. You got three undefeated teams in NC State, Louisville, and Virginia Tech. So you have a number 16 team in the country that is currently ranked eighth in the ACC wow. just because you lost to Louisville and, and a really close one there. But nonetheless, you look at the teams above them, it's not going to be an easy road to go and make your statement in the ACC this year against anybody. Yeah, not at all. And I mean, Georgia Tech, you know, not been able to play some games as well, so that hurts them. And I mean, we've talked about posts and thinking about name and yep. NC State, one of the best post players that, you know, you'll see around the league. Absolutely, and of course, Louisville just has a strong overall game. My player on that squad is, I love Healy Van Lith, just watching her play, I think she's phenomenal. Emily Angsler is, is a very underrated player, yeah. in my opinion. I think she's somebody, another transfer from Syracuse, can literally do it all, and is in some great fit shape. Looking at her from her freshman year to now, she really took it seriously, and she's playing like it. And that was a huge, huge pickup for Jeff Falls. And, and oh, yeah. He will tell you about that, too. Uh, just what she, she brings to the table, just always in the right spot. You talk about passion, too. First one falls for Love. Misses the second. Races for the rebound. Virginia able to hold on to possession. UVA kept this one close, Brooke, in that second quarter. They actually had an 18 to 16 lead. Since then, a 34 to 6 run for Georgia Tech. Yeah, and that's the strength of their defense. You know, we knew Virginia was going to be shorthanded without three of their starters today. But knowing, okay, behind the back, we will take a little bit of sauce. But you you got to understand, when, I mean, you're basically playing against one of, if not the best defenses yeah. in the country. So it's, this is typical. You know, it, teams struggle to put up points against Georgia Tech all the time. And to do it without three starters, well, you really have to climb uphill. Maria Hermosa now with 18 points on the game. She's 8 for 13 from the floor today. Carol Miller gets fouled on the drive. She'll go to the line to shoot two. 
second on Hermosa. We were talking to Tina Thompson about players like Carol Miller, who's, you know, had to step her game up as well today. And Thompson said, you never know in circumstances like this, players are going to decide if they'll step up. I mean, Carol Miller, who had knee surgery in the offseason, said she's not quite 100%, but she's definitely going to show up to compete. And she's done done that today. And it's, it's interesting, too, because she made a great point. And I think a lot of people at home, or if you're not an athlete, it's really hard to understand this. But when you have surgery, the things you have to relearn to not only, you know, walk, bend your knee, um, squat, lift weights, but to also trust it that you can cut and make a move and jump off a leg that caused you a lot of pain at some point in time. That takes a lot, a lot to get over, and a lot of monotony. Time in the training room doing, you know, what you think are the dumbest exercises ever, but they end up helping you out. A shot by Latin. Yeah, Miller is certainly kind of learning how to do that, but Amandine Twa has done it a couple of times. Yeah, and yeah. It's been interesting kind of hearing from her talking about how she's had to not only get back to 100% health, but kind of change the way that she plays the game, right, Brooke? I mean, she used to be one of those players that would put the ball on the floor, get to the rim, and now she's kind of adjusted into more of a pure jump shooter. And she's learned how to shoot, you know, because she's hurt her right and left knee. It's good footwork inside and a strong board. Carter grabbing that one, putting it back. But yeah, it's definitely changed the game of, of Twa because Tina Thompson was talking about how she was there for the first knee recovery and then also there for the second injury. So she said, you know what? We're going to work on your shot. 56-26. It is all Georgia Tech. Tina Thompson, timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Welcome back, Nell Fortner and crew. Happy with what they've seen, certainly here in the second half. Brooke putting up 30 points. They're 12 for 18 from the field. This is a team that averages 61 and a half points a game. They already have 56 with 7.03 left to go. Yeah, this is definitely helpful for a Georgia Tech team that's been trying to find their offensive rhythm and their offensive flow. And we've really seen uh, two players, Kubai and Hermosa, break out today with 13 and 18 points. Those two playing extremely well, but you got to appreciate the efficiency, I think, at which Georgia Tech's playing. Getting a lot of shots inside. They've got 26 points in the paint. Getting after it on the offensive glass, too. 13 offensive rebounds. That well, was tipped into the backcourt, so still alive for Virginia, but only five left on the shot clock. Got to get a shot off. And they don't do it. Shot clock violation. And another turnover. That'll be the 17th in the game for... Virginia. And the efficiency, I mean, look, Georgia Tech's only turned the ball over seven times as well. So, you know, as much as they would like to you know, pinpoint saying, hey, we got to get better on their offense, not turning the ball over, shooting a decent percentage of 40 today, doing all right. I'd say the only area of improvement you really want to see is they're only shooting five of 17, 29% from three. First one falls for Kubai every Saturday at 10 Eastern, right here on the ACC Network after our men's basketball games. The Nothing But Net crew gonna break down the night in the ACC with highlights analysis of the games on schedule. Of course, a look ahead in the coming week. That's insight and can only get one place right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN apps you can watch anywhere, anytime. trying to set up this offense and again a Virginia team that has not played a game since December 19th they have played one game since December 8th trying to find their footing here as ACC play rolls along and it's little things like that right you see Twa mishandling the ball at the top of the key they've had a couple of shot clock violations here in these last few possessions. That's what Tina Thompson was talking to us about, about, hey, our timing isn't quite on just yet. You know, when you don't have the ability to have your full roster in there, go at game speed and learn from games, you're going to miss out on things like, you know, closing out on defense or getting after the board. It's, it's the timing of passes. It's all of those little things that stay crispy when you can play games and, and play them consistently. But when you can't, and you have mental fatigue and you've got physical fatigue, this is the kind of stuff that shows up. 
Watson and drills the free throw line jumper. She's got six. The other thing that Tina Thompson said, too, was uh, she didn't really anticipate it being this much of a challenge to come back after a postponed full season after five games last year. And I think she and the rest of the crew kind of thought they would find their footing a little bit quicker. That has not happened. But th there was also a lot of factors, I think, that went into having to cancel the season last year for Virginia that aren't necessarily talked about. Of course, it was, you know, the COVID protocols and everything, but they were dealing with a lot of injuries to their team as well. It yeah. wasn't just the COVID health and safety protocols. Yeah, and that's a hard call to make. I mean, you, you're having, you're ending the season, you know, for your team as Kubai right. just puts on an all-American move, spin, reverse. Just incredible what Kubai is capable of doing. And yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's a tough call, you know, and, and it's not that they, they didn't play, yes, but they did practice. They were in the gym trying to get better, but again, it's not the same. You know, they're appreciative of being out there on the floor today. You know, they'd rather be here, even though it's a blowout win right now for Georgia Tech, they'd rather be out here yes. than back in Virginia practicing. I can tell you that. No question about it. No substitute for it. As Carter puts it on the floor, kicks back out to Kubai. Kubai fading away in the paint off the mark. Carter with the rebound there, puts it up and gets fouled by number 14, Caden Lawson. And excuse me, Amity Dwab credited with the foul there. Aviance Carter, the sophomore from Norcross, Georgia. Got some good experience last year. Came off the bench in 15 games. One for two from the line. run for Georgia Tech. Four left to go here in the fourth quarter. And Tech's been able to put together a stretch of these runs throughout the entire game, and, and they can go back again. Credit their defense. Active hands, great help side defense, post-stepping up, just bothering every shot, boxing out. That's a tough one right there. They'll take that. Virginia badly needing some offense, and that'll help the confidence. Twa now with eight. She's two for nine from the floor. Virginia as a whole shooting 23% from the field today. And the ball knocked away, but regained by Georgia Tech. Out to Carter on the three. And Ray Hermosa walks. It's the eighth turnover of the game for Georgia Tech. Yeah, just something, I mean, a lot of things went right for Georgia Tech today, but just something to pay attention to if you're watching film and looking for ways to improve. And you've seen a couple times today, Hermosa's grabbed the ball, and I don't know if it's pressure of the double team or just trying to hurry through her move, but she's walked, right? So you want to pay attention to that when you're watching film to say, okay, catch the ball, hold on for a beat, you know, think about which direction you want to go based on where the defense is at, and don't try to just catch and make your move all at once. You, you need to be able to do those things separately so that you don't trap them. Sarah Bates into Hermosa. Hermosa fouled. And she will go to the line against London Clarkson there. It's going to be her fourth personal foul. Talk a little bit more about this Georgia Tech team and what they did last year, the Sweet 16 run. And you mentioned it, they return over 80% of their scoring. In your opinion, is this team, at least right now, poised to make another deep run? Obviously, it hurts without Akira Fletcher. But can they still get to that level? Yeah, I, I definitely think that they've got the pieces in place. Um, they're going to need some offensive help, you know, outside of Kubai, uh, outside of, of her and Hermosa. I think those two have established themselves, but you're going to have to get some, some guard play and get some consistent guard play to make a deep run. The women's field is loaded this year, so even though you return 85% of your scoring back, you got ways to go.
Welcome back, 65-29. Number 16, Georgia Tech, handily over Virginia. 2.36 left to go in the fourth quarter. Ray Hermosa with a team leading 20 points in this game. Eight for 14 from the floor, seven boards. Another great game for her. Yeah, and thinking about the rebounds, I mean, Georgia Tech has dominated that area too. 41 boards to just 27 for Virginia. Carol Miller on the block, leaves it short, and Love brings in the rebound. Give it to her, yeah. Carter puts it on the floor, the shot off the mark. Stroutman of fighting for the rebound. Ends up in the hands of Caden Lawson. Lawson, the younger sister of former Cavalier, Danny Lawson. Danny, of course, transferred in from Purdue. Here's Miller, and a long two. Trip to the NCAA tournament last year for Georgia Tech it was the first time since 2014. Also marked the 10th trip to the NCAA tournament in program history. Yeah, that was an exciting. Foul. It was an exciting run for Georgia Tech. Had a chance to call their game to watch them going to the Sweet 16. And I mean, I, I always love when the coaches get into the locker room and just get doused <laughs> with water bottles. That's probably one of my favorites. And of course, Renell Fortner, her energy is so awesome. And, you know, we've seen her on the broadcast side of things, seen her on the coaching side of things. You take a look at you know, all the accolades of Coach Fortner grabbing ACC Coach of the Year, Kubai Defensive Player of the Year, and Lawton and Most Improved. I always appreciate when a coach can be the same, have the same energy and the same demeanor and, and, and be that same person on the broadcast side or on the coaching side. And she's definitely that. And I can see why she inspires her players to play so hard and play so well for her. Yeah, she's got like the nail yeah thing going. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of baller. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. And we saw earlier the bobblehead too. That's, uh, yeah. that's pretty special. Would you say you've made it when you got the bobblehead yeah, going? Yeah, I, I was going to say that 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 probably is is a good sign that you've you've done some things. <laughs> well, it's exciting Twelve. to see her build this program down in Georgia Tech and in a great city like Atlanta, where you can you know, recruit a ton of talent in the South. Atlanta's got a lot of history. There we go, right there. I like that. Yep. <laughs> that she, you know what she's saying? Nail yeah, nail yeah. We got to the Sweet 16. Final four next. Twa with 40 seconds to go has it blocked out of bounds. Yeah, and like you said, Brooke, the question for this Georgia Tech team is just going to be where where can they get the offense? And Nell Forder said that she considers herself a defensive coach, but she said when she came back and, and started at Georgia Tech, she said, I want to focus on offense. And it just kind of went the, the opposite way where they're the best defensive team in the country right now so yeah well good thing for tech they signed four scoring guards in november so y'all better watch out next season it is on some more applause and standing ovation from the crowd here at georgia tech Love will bounce it out here. There's still a little bit of a difference there between the shot clock and the game clock. So we'll take the violation and hand it over to Virginia to close us out here. And a rough one for UVA, you know, unable to even get to their season low, which is 38 against UCF on November 17th. He's shorthanded without three starters, but you got to appreciate the fact that they're here. They're playing. They made the trip. And Tina Thompson will get back with her team, get back to the drawing board, and do what they can. But Cavaliers 
fought as well as they could against the best defense in the ACC, potentially the NCAA. Georgia Tech holding opponents to an average of 45.7. They have held Virginia to 31 points today. That's a season low for the Cavaliers, a team that has been dealing with COVID issues and health protocol issues, as has Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets only had seven available today, but they made the most of those seven, and especially Hermosa and Kubai combining for 37 of the team's 67 points. An incredible win and a good win for a team that has struggled 